Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to part two of 20 of my new Project 2020 Artie series. Today on tap is going to be Andrew Thiel. We're gonna break down his first 10 cards, and I also have Greg who sent me his list. We're gonna compare his list to my list and figure out right now what is Andrew Thiel's best card at the 50% mark. All that and more in one second. My name is Chris, and welcome back to the home of Project 2020 here on YouTube. You can reach me on Twitter and Instagram at CRT underscore sports cards. And if you want to continue the conversation, follow us on Facebook. The group is at CRT sports cards. But this is part number two. In part number one, we spoke about Ermsey. So if you missed that video, I'll have it linked above right now. So check that out if you're an Ermsey fan or want to know what my top 10 cards were for Ermsey at the moment. But today, up on board for us is going to be Andrew Thiel. And Andrew Thiel, for me personally, as a fan of Project 2020, is someone I just haven't connected with. And because of that, he right now resides in my bottom 10 artists for Project 2020. I'm by no means ever gonna rank out the bottom 10 or the top 10. Everyone knows my top two favorites of Grotesque and Natural, but that, that of course could change. We have four months to go in the set, but right now, at the 50% mark, Andrew Thiel is in the bottom 10, but that could change, and I know there are numerous fans out there of Andrew Thiel. His artwork is some of the most detailed artwork out there, and I think if we had these cards like in a five by eight or bigger, they would stand out even more. There's so much detail in these cards, I think it gets lost in the small size of a trading card. So I just think at the moment, he is limited by the size of the card, but overall, he is a fantastic artist. But let's take a look at Andrew Thiel's first 10 cards so far in Project 2020. So scrolling through his collection, Andrew Thiel's very first card was Willie Mays. His second card was Mike Trout. Ermsey had the first Mike Trout and Andrew Thiel had the second Mike Trout. His third card was Sandy Koufax. Fourth card was Nolan Ryan. And his fifth card was Derek Jeter. Number six was Mark McGuire. Number seven was Don Mattingly, Kiss the Ring. Number eight was Roberto Clemente. Number nine was Ted Williams on a pedestal. And then most recently, number 10 was his Ricky Henderson. And then when you add in his print runs here, his first card, Willie Mays, 1464. Then he spiked all the way to Trout. That kind of showed us what this set could do. 13,200. Then he's back down with Koufax, over 2,000. Then Ryan, Jeter, McGuire, kind of all right around that bubble, sort of the start of start of the, the Project 2020 bubble. And then you have Mattingly on the back end, 8,400. Then Clemente, 65. And then most recently, his Williams and his Ricky Henderson, just over 4,000. So if you've been tracking these at home or on my website, when it comes to his overall print run, at the moment, Andrew Thiel sold 88,490, just about 6,000 cards ahead of Ermsey. And when you think of, of Andrew Thiel versus Ermsey, Ermsey has the attention of the collectors, but when you put out a couple of different cards in the bubble, it's really gonna drive that, that number up really high. So right now, for Andrew Thiel, just under 90,000 cards. And not to be forgotten, in the shuffle, when it comes to Andrew Thiel, he has released three companion cards to this moment. The first one is called New York Heritage, and that released, uh, actually last week, people are getting it in their houses right now, and the presentation of this companion card is just fantastic. The second one is his Father's Day card, and then his third one is California Dreamin'. When you look at it, you see Sandlot. So on top of his first 10 cards, we also have these three great companion cards. But let's take a look now at his 10 cards. Let's go 10, 9, 8, and let's get to my number one, and let's get to Greg's number one of Andrew Thiel at the moment. So now looking at his cards from number seven to number 10, and I will say this on every single video, no matter what I do in art, I can never even come close to any of these cards. So I am not ranking these from the perspective of I can't stand them. It's just when you look at these 10 cards, in their own sort of bubble, where do they rank to me visually, and then where do they rank to the fan who sent me their list. None of these pieces of artwork are bad. They're just not our favorite when it comes to the top 10. But on the bottom four, we have a couple of similarities, and then we're off on a couple of cards. So Ted Williams for us, both are in the bottom. Also, Don Mattingly, both in the bottom. Now where we differ, and we sort of split past going forward on these, is in his bottom four, he also has Mike Trout and Ricky Henderson, whereas I have Sandy Koufax and Willie Mays. And one cool thing, Greg also included some notes around his bottom, these bottom four cards, and on the Trout, it said it pains him 
to put him in the bottom when it comes to the fact that he is a trout collector. And then on the Ted Williams, he said if he was not collecting Andrew Thiel, he would not have purchased this card. So this is clearly right now his 10th ranked card in his overall set. But let's now take a look at six, five, four, and let's find out number one. So coming in in the sixth spot for me personally, I have that Mike Trout card just escaped the bottom four when it came to Andrew Thiel. And then for Greg himself, he does have Mark McGuire in the sixth spot. Coming in fifth in the most recent card for me when it comes to Andrew Thiel, it is the Ricky Henderson. And then here is Greg with that Willie Mays. Now the fourth card, this one I thought was very, very surprising that both of us placed Nolan Ryan fourth overall. This was one of the first cards I ever purchased from a bulk perspective. I think it's a really neat design. I really like this card overall, but for me right now, this is the fourth card and with Greg also the fourth card. So very interesting tie into our list considering how different our first couple cards were. Hope you're liking the countdown so far and I'm also looking for more lists. I've only done two of the 20 artists there are 18 left, so if you have an artist you like, send me your top 10 list either on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or email me at chris at crtsportscards.com for potential inclusion on my next video. Also, if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you're notified when the next video goes up and when I do post up my bi-weekly regular Project 2020 video series. Coming in number three, here again we match up, and this is the last time we're gonna match up um, going forward on this list, but this is a really, really interesting neat card for Roberto Clemente in my perspective. When it, it really feels to me that he's sort of kneeling down, looking at his future as a rookie, he's seeing everything he accomplished, he's seeing you know, all of his successes, all of his failures, everything that happened in his life, I thought it was a really, really great card. I just wish it was bigger. There's so many cool things about these cards, so much detail that I just wish they were bigger, but it's a great card overall. Coming in number two, this is where we, we, we differ wildly on this one. I have his Derek Jeter as his second card, and then Greg here has Sandy Koufax. If you remember, I had Sandy Koufax in my bottom four, so we are polar opposites on this card, but I really like this Derek Jeter for a couple different reasons just because there are multiple different images here and you can look at this card and get a different feeling of Jeter's career over the many years in this simple trading card. And now our number one card, and we differ here, but for different reasons. On Greg's card himself, he said this is the card that brought him to the set to collect the entire set all together. So you can imagine when he saw this card uh, on the screen, it really spoke to him and now of course he is collecting Andrew Thiel. And then for me personally, when I think of Andrew Thiel, as I said earlier, I haven't really connected with him, but when I saw this Mark McGuire in person, I said, wow, I was so stunned by the card. And yes, the McDonald's changed in the background, but for the most part, it is exactly the same as it was first displayed when it went for sale. And when I got it in, it was just an impressive card overall. And this is again why I say in my normal videos that if Topps can get us these cards out faster, it's only gonna help the enthusiasm of the set because so many of these cards look amazing in person and the amount of detail gets lost on the computer screen. So my top card right now is Mark McGuire and then for Greg, it is the Derek Jeter. How different was my list or Greg's list to your top 10 list? Leave your list in the comments below and let's get some discussion going around Andrew Thiel. It will be very curious to see as we move through the back half of his set where these 10 cards land in his overall 20 card library. So I can't wait to do part two video in 2021 around Andrew Thiel and Project 2020. Hope you liked the video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna hear more news and notes from me around Project 2020, please check out that playlist on the screen right now.